From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Greater data consumption requires enormous scale of capacity delivery through a core network, and as there is a move towards more cloud-based services, undersea fiber optic cable system operator Seacom, as a wholesaler, has to meet the need for the 100 gigabit Ethernet services between key network points, such as large data centers. Brindavani Naidu reports. In a bid to increase capacity and reduce the cost of each bit, as well as space and power consumption and the ever-changing market conditions, Crema Media's Engineering News spoke to CECOM, Africa's Head of Product Strategy, Savir Ramdani, about the successful trial of five 100 gigabit per second channels of coherent optical transmission. The 500 gigabit per second trial was run over and looped back across CECOM's newly commissioned Dark Fiber Africa Link, from Mtunzini in KwaZulu-Natal to Johannesburg. The strategic um, uh, market changes that are taking place is that we anticipate in three to five years customers will require 100 gigabit Ethernet type services in their core network to cope with the incredible demand that's coming through from a data perspective. As the market shifts to more cloud-based services and shifts towards um, um, uh, such as storage in the cloud, uh, video and, and peering and so forth, that really puts a lot of pressure on core networks. And by having 100 gigabit Ethernet between the two locations, it, it allows our customers to meet the demand of the consumers at the end. Seacom's made this significant investment into the DFA network from Johannesburg um, into Mtanzini onwards into Durban because we've seen a need in the market for diverse supply. So by we ourselves needed additional capacity between these two locations to meet our customer requirements. But instead of buying that on existing networks, we felt by building or partnering with DFA to build an alternative network, we had more diverse networks in place. So furthermore, I think we're very proud of this investment because um, aside from, from Telcom and BBI that actually runs the current network infrastructure between this, this is the next link in place. So once again, we're trying to be visionary and look ahead of market uh, demand and prepare ourselves for that. Embarking on a project of such a great scale has also seen a strong focus on the use of African skills and expertise. The submarine cable operator, which has entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Square Kilometre Array South Africa to provide support for the country's 1.5 billion euro SKA radio telescope project, would also see a strong focus on the use of African skills. Part of, um, uh, part of CECOM's story is the fact that we are in fact 77% owned by, uh, by Africans, 50% 50, 50 of which is South African, 25% or so um, from Kenya. And part of our shareholder mandate and our management vision is to ensure that the company grows by developing African expertise. So this project uh, is incredibly significant in that light because it was project managed, designed and delivered using CECOM's African engineers. And um, of course the technology we had brought in from the US to enable this, but you know, we work very closely with uh, Dark Fiber Africa, an African business, with people like TIS, which was the system integrator, and which Plessy and Terraco, which provided the co-location co along, along the route. So CECOM and, and uh, SKA have entered into an MOU, which really allows us to support the uh, SKA in their bid response. Uh, you know, when we reflect on the requirements out of the SKA, there is no one operator or one supplier that can meet that requirements. So first, the first thing we need to achieve for Africa is for Africa to win this project. The second thing is, once that project's won, there will be a requirement for every one of us operators in the market to work together to meet those requirements. So at this stage, you know, we're stepping forward first um, to try and work with the SKA, support them in their bid process. We're going one step further, we're demonstrating the capabilities of African engineers to deploy 100 gigs waves and 500 gigabits in a single, a single trial as we have done today to position Africa to be a winner in this bid. Other news making headlines this week, a German solar tracking company eyes the South African markets. South Africa offers some relief for Section 45 transactions and a 1.9 billion rand glass factory commissioning is on track. German solar technology company Dega Energy says that it's contemplating entering the South African market, owing to the country's energy policies increasingly being geared toward renewable energy solutions. Well, we are market leader um in the solar branch in regards of tracking system. We are doing it since 12 years and we are um, established in more than 40 countries worldwide. And we see South Africa as an upcoming market for us. 
due to the perfect weather conditions we face here and also due to the political situation, which we can definitely think about um, creating a market here for our systems. We see South Africa as the step in the sub-Sahara region. South Africa's Finance Minister Pravin Gordon has announced that the controversial suspension of Section 45 of South Africa's tax laws, which has been used to facilitate a number of black economic empowerment deals and other leveraged transactions, has been lifted. This is about ensuring that the BEE deals that do happen, happen on a sustainable basis. It is certainly about, in fact, clearing up the terrain so that uh, People who get involved in BEE deals are not sold structures that later on they realize the consequences of in, in, in some way. So this will actually assist people in making sure that they're getting honest advice in terms of, of, of where, they, uh, where they're going. Glass producer Consol Glass has completed about 85% of the construction and installation work of Phase 1 of its 1.9 billion rand greenfield glass factory in Nigel Gauteng. The new furnace at Nigel will be 400 tonnes, 400 tonnes a day, uh, and mainly, well, initially we'll be doing flint, flint glass. It's a gas-fired furnace, okay, um, it has got four production lines on it, um, and all production lines will come online same time, uh, mainly focused for the beverage market, that's the, for, for Nigel, but it's got the flexibility, I mean we can run any glass colour we need to inside that furnace. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.